Now at five, excessive heat and humidity will continue through Saturday with only a slight chance for a shower to cool us off. Plus, one city in the Pine Belt is getting a jump start on the 4th of July. We'll have a live look from Ellisville ahead of tonight's festivities. And later, a major decision from the Supreme Court about affirmative action programs at universities. We're going to break down the opinion today in just a few minutes. Your news at 5 starts right now. Stay informed. Stay aware. Stay safe. Today is a first alert weather alert day. This is WDAM 7 News. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Michael Clark and I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. We're still dealing with those dangerously high temperatures today, so let's check in with our first alert weather team. Yeah, Rex, did we break 100 degrees today? It certainly felt like it. I don't think we did, but wow. I'll look at the almanac. We just updated itself a few minutes ago. We'll okay. check and see, but we're still dealing with a first alert weather day through Saturday, but I have some good news because it appears over the next several days after Saturday, we're going to see temperatures come down a little bit and while rain chances are going to go up. We'll take a look at the excessive heat warning in effect until 9 p.m. this evening. Of course, this will be in effect again through tomorrow into Saturday as well. I don't think it'll be in effect for Sunday, though. And here are some heat index threats. Uh, extreme danger, 115 degree plus. You can get some trouble with that. Here are some heat safety rules. Stay hydrated. Take multiple breaks. Bring your pets inside. Check your livestock, too, as well. Check on the elderly. And keep a fan running at all times and find a friend with an air conditioner or go to a library. And that's it for right now. I'll be back with a complete forecast coming up shortly. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Rex. Well, the city of Ellisville is getting a head start on the 4th of July holiday with a fireworks show this evening. Our Cam Benelli is there checking out the scene. Cam. That's right, Carrie. I'm here in downtown Ellisville where the festivities are going to take place in front of Community Bank at the park. Now the live music starts from 6 to 9 p.m., but after that's the fireworks show. And if you want to keep cool, snow cones and lemonade will be available for sale. Before the event, I got a chance to catch up with Ellisville Mayor Lynn Buckholtz to ask him why he loves coming to it annually. It's just an opportunity to get the, the community together. Uh, and I think that's what we need more of and always an opportunity to, to celebrate, as he said, our independence on the 4th of July. That's what this is about. And if you plan on coming out, you might want to bring a lawn chair or a blanket to find that perfect spot to watch the show. People line all up and down the streets of downtown Ellisville just to get a glimpse. I talked to the vice president of Community Bank who told me the show's going to be about 15 minutes of full fireworks, so you're not going to want to miss it. If it's anything like last year's, it's going to be a blast. So I'm going to send it back to you guys in the newsroom. Reporting live in Ellisville, Cam Benelli, WDN7, on your side. All right, thanks, Cam. Jones County is currently looking for volunteers to join its fire departments. Departments in the county recently saw a decrease in their number of employees, possibly due to an aging workforce. Opportunities for volunteers vary depending on each department and could lead to employment. Assisting with those events to assist them with traffic control to actually go and we, we obviously need firefighters. We need, mm -hmm. we'll train people. We do the classes, we'll cover that. All we need is the people who are willing to go through that and, and, and learn and become certified. Training for volunteers is based on the schedule of each department and instructor. For more information, contact the Jones County Emergency Operations Center. Well, despite a building fire last month that wiped out a lot of storage, the field house for the homeless is still trying to help those in need during these hot temperatures. Leaders started a food drive for people staying there at the shelter, and the director tells us they've seen an increase in people coming in to get out of the heat, though the field house does have food right now. They are in need of some other items, and some of the items they have need to be cooked, and that doesn't help people without a place to prepare that food. We have a pantry here that is designed just for people that are homeless that are living in the woods. So we really need items for people that are homeless. Um, that's like canned sausage, um, you know, just things that they can open up and eat while they're there in the camps, crackers, that type of thing. If you'd like to donate canned food items, you can drop them off at the Field House in Hattiesburg. Donations are being accepted throughout the year. 
Well, the Biden administration is investing more than $3 billion to prevent and reduce homelessness across America with a focus on helping veterans. According to the White House, $58 million will go to veterans and helping them find and keep jobs through training, apprenticeships, and other support services. The funding also includes $11 million for legal services. Plus, the Department of Housing and Urban Development and Veteran Affairs are launching a new series of boot camps to help quickly rehouse veterans. The VA says it's currently on track to rehouse 38,000 veterans this year. A landmark decision from the U.S. Supreme Court today that will impact the future generations of college students and U.S. campus life. The conservative majority court ruling against affirmative action in college and university admissions. Karen Kafe is in Washington with more details for you. The rulings in these two cases coming down with the conservative justices in the majority and the Chief Justice John Roberts writing their opinion. At the heart of the cases, programs at Harvard University and the University of North Carolina that the institutions argued helped them diversify their student bodies. President Joe Biden expressing his disagreement with Thursday's landmark Supreme Court ruling banning race as a factor in college admissions. Today, the court once again walked away from decades of precedent. Overturning decades of precedent, the court's conservative justices struck down affirmative action programs at Harvard University and the University of North Carolina. Programs the institutions argued helped them to diversify their student bodies. The justices said such programs violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Chief Justice John Roberts writing in the majority opinion, both programs lack sufficiently focused and measurable objectives warranting the use of race, unavoidably employ race in a negative manner, involve racial stereotyping, and lack meaningful endpoints. Joined by liberal justices Elena Kagan and Katanji Brown Jackson in her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote, the court subverts the constitutional guarantee of equal protection by further entrenching racial inequality in education. The majority opinion said students may still address race in an application, like expressing how it's impacted their lives in an admissions essay. But the ruling will reverberate through the American college admissions process. It will force every university to redo their admissions policies and try to figure out different ways to achieve diversity. And potentially impact generations of American students. Political reaction to the decision has fallen roughly along party lines, with most Republicans arguing it is good news and Democrats sharply critical. And in a divided Congress, it is unlikely that any legislative moves on affirmative action would be made. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. With the Supreme Court ending affirmative action in the college admission process, a new poll suggests most Americans support that decision. A CBS News and YouGov poll from this month found 70 percent of Americans think the Supreme Court should rule that colleges can't consider race in admissions. In another poll by Pew Research Center, about 50 percent of U.S. adults say they disapprove of selective colleges and universities taking race and ethnicity into account in order to increase diversity at the school. Now, in that same poll, 49 percent said consideration of race and ethnicity makes the overall admissions process less fair. The U.S. Supreme Court kicked the case of a former postal worker who refused to work on Sundays because of his religion back to the lower court. The case involved an evangelical Christian who said the U.S. Postal Service violated federal law by failing to reasonably accommodate his inability to work on Sundays. The Supreme Court said the lower court should take another look at the impact the request would have on the Postal Service as a whole. The case could, in the future, make it easier for employees to seek religious accommodations at work. America's debt will climb to a record high toward the end of the decade. That's according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. According to the CBO, U.S. public debt will climb from 98 percent of gross domestic product at the end of this year to 107 percent of GDP in 2029. The spike is expected despite the debt limit deal congressional lawmakers reached this year to chip away at the federal deficit. The nonprofit group committee for a responsible federal budget believes the debt will be around $36 trillion in 2029. Right now, it's $25.4 trillion. A complete look at your forecast is coming up after the break. Please stay with us.